Welcome to the, uh, see, like I gotta always come in with better energy. Welcome to the Jiggy Show, where Jiggy people do Jiggy things. Welcome to the Jiggy Show. I am your host, Bob Smooth. We're back. Those that are watching this, they'll probably, y'all, like, a little bit confused. Like, this man keeps changing up the setting. He's very inconsistent. But I'm mean, very, in, I'm inconsistently consistent. So, we brought back the, the table. And um, I have a special guest today with me, Talithia Morris. She is, um, she's going to help me and y'all make better life decisions. And that's why she's here today. And I'm gonna let her introduce herself and give a little description about and who she is. Talithia, stage yours. Okay. Hi, I'm Talithia. Um, I am a real estate agent as well as an investor. Um, I started real estate um, both parts two years ago. Actually, I was just thinking about it. It literally, as of March, 2017 so it's literally been two years at this point so how's it been how's it been so far how's the how's these two years been um it was challenging at first Mm -hmm. um now it's i kind of roll with the punches but initially when i first started out uh it was challenging um and i think i caused it upon myself so i am religious and so when i started real estate um as a as a realtor Mm -hmm. um I pray for patience because I didn't really have patience Uh, and I knew that about myself but um, I think God gave me (laughs) scenarios where I had to um, exemplify patience Mm -hmm. and I wasn't prepared to do that I just Mm -hmm. wanted patience going in so I was throwing everything under the sun Uh far as um, different situations where it was stressful and I wanted to quit honestly I did but I had a larger goal in mind of helping others so I stayed on track with it so now when different issues arise I've already tackled everything under the sun so I'm okay nice and now we're here today two years later and she's <laughs> out here just killing it and she's gonna help me also kill it too and cuz I'm um, I'm 26 um, a black male doesn't like have much property owned and like I spend my money on shoes and clothes, just dumb stuff that I should stop. So I need you to help me out here. So how can me as a 26 year old go in and like start investing in real estate? What do I need to know? How do I start? How do I start? Where do I go? Um, well, if, or just the investing side. The, 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 first, just the investing, investing side. side, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say that you can look into, um, I mean, everybody goes on YouTube and all this stuff, right? Uh, I, when I was searching to become an investor, I actually, I mean, I think everybody has that issue of where, where do you go to start mm-hmm. doing it? Mm-hmm. So I happened to stumble upon somebody that um, had flipped a property that my sister was looking to purchase, and this was uh, about two and a half years ago. Okay. So um, whenever I found out, whenever she was touring the house with us and so forth, um, she kept saying, yeah, we did this, we did this to the house. And I was just like, you keep saying we, do you own this house, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, she she was like, well, sort of, I, you know, I flipped properties and I was like, oh wow, like I wanna, I was like, I want to flip too, you know. So can, can you explain the flipping property? What does that mean exactly? Um, so you purchase a property uh-huh. um, at a discount, okay. and you make sure the numbers work on your end that you will profit from it in the end once you've put the money in to renovate it. Okay. So um, I I didn't know how to do it, but I, I I mean people see the TV shows and stuff like that, so I I just wanted to learn how to do it. So I actually offered her to. I was like, I don't. I was like, can I pay you to, you know, show me, mm-hmm. show me how to do it? Mm-hmm. And um, she, she said, well, she was a real estate agent as well, okay. and she said, well, I really need help with my transactions and so forth. So you can help me with that, and then in turn, I'll show you how to do real estate investing. Nice. Um, and this is prior to you being a real estate agent. Yes. Okay. I okay. actually became a real estate agent because of her. Okay. But... Shout out to sis. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said shout out to sis. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I can thank her now. <laughs> I was. <laughs> there were some times I was <laughs> mad at her, but I can yeah. thank you. <laughs> so um, I actually um, 
I was helping her, uh -huh. and then she was just like, you know, you can help me with more if you have your license. Okay. And so I was like, okay. So I started looking at um, how I can get into taking the classes and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to join with her brokerage initially, but um, when I started taking the classes, I felt that I should be with this other brokerage that I had taken the um, classes with because of what their um, the meaning behind their brokerage is. So it's God first and family and your business. Nice. So um, with, nice. with Keller Williams. So um, when I did that, then I was helping her on the investing side mm -hmm. and she, she was all over the place and I was like, I might she can get in some trouble like mm -hmm. with the stuff she was doing and okay. so and my brother had helped her out with a couple things um to get a little bit of extra cash and he was just like look i'm telling you now the only thing you can learn from her is what not to do <laughs> so i said okay well Honestly, um I, like I, I i believe it though <laughs> so so but at that point i had my license uh -huh. and i um i still didn't know real estate investing because she she was paying people to manage her properties that she was flipping at the time and come to find out they're like in West Virginia at home mm -hmm. and she's paying them and they're they're just sitting at home collecting money pretty much and not monitoring the project. So okay. you do want somebody on site okay. whenever you're um, having a property flipped. If okay. you don't have, it's hard to find trusted contractors. So um, you do want somebody there just checking on everything, making sure they're they're working mm -hmm. um, in, or even there. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, remember, <laughs> I remember one time she had us pick up a, um, we went by there, we had to get a ceiling fan for the living room or something. Okay. And I was like, why are you doing this? Why isn't, like, You're paying can't they somebody. just go, yeah, but yeah. can't they just go down the store and get one? Yeah. And she's like, oh, I, so anyways, we went to go pick it up. Went to go drop it off. The property manager was supposed to be, project manager, sorry. He's supposed to be at the property and um, they were supposed to be delivering the appliances that day. Okay. Well, um, he wasn't there, neither were the appliances, but on the lockbox, there was like um, a code. She was like, is this the code to the lockbox? So basically, the property the project manager had left the code for the people to drop off the appliances so i don't know if he even had been on site at the project but mm -hmm. he was getting paid <laughs> <laughs> okay so like um not so organized so you pretty much what you you learn not to do is you need to have a team that's ready to be there on site and all that just or the organize organize um and make sure everything is going smoothly yeah that team word so yeah it's hard to trust people to do what you would do yourself. Okay. So, so how do we um, trust people? <laughs> <laughs> um, good question. In That's this business, like, like how can question. you trust people in this business? Um, I think they really have to prove themselves up front okay. before um, trusting them to handle anything because it's um like your reputation is your business and then you're trusting people and you're delegating things out to them but you have to trust that they're going to actually like follow through and do what they committed to do so um i've had people that and it's always my name on the line at the bottom of it and i i have this thing where i have to be involved somewhat you know mm -hmm. not a micromanager but a micromanager <laughs> so um but it, like i said it's my business though yeah, you know yeah, yeah. so brand, and then yeah. i don't want um to be paying somebody that is given access to the appliance people delivering you know appliances so um i think there i mean you could say see you can get impressions from people whenever you first meet them and stuff but i don't like to go solely on that because it can kind of be Sometimes it could be... Um, people can fake it. Yeah, yeah. People yeah, can fake yeah. it. Can fake or it. some people may have certain insecurities, but it might not necessarily mean that they can't get it done. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's just something... It, it takes time uh -huh. to trust anybody, like any type of... Even a relationship, you know, friendship yeah. or yeah. a lover or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So like, all right, let's get to the legal side of things now. Okay. Okay, you mentioned that you went and get, you got your license as a real estate agent. Why was it so important for you to get your license as an agent and um going and then going to that and transitioning to become a real estate inv investor? Well, I so 
one thing is one myth or whatever you want to call it is a lot of people they say hey i want to get into real estate investing uh -huh. and then they're like i'm going to be a real estate agent and you don't have to do both exactly and i don't want to do both. yeah That's yeah and i would say i don't want to i would say i don't want to do both either but i i love what i do so okay. and i love helping people so <laughs> i'm gonna stay on track to do both okay um and continue to do that but you don't have to be both mm -hmm. um to um to be an investor so the reason the only reason why i got my license was to help her on the residential side with her selling properties helping buyers and sellers mm -hmm. and um in turn she was showing me something so i was helping i was like offering my time to help her do that so she could in turn show me how to do real estate investing. Okay. But it wasn't reciprocated. Like I was doing my part, she wasn't doing her part. So, so. she sounded like she was busy. She sounded like she, she had was, managed a people, lot. Of, yeah, yeah, and she was waiting for me to follow up with her and I'm like, you need me to help you with stuff. So I was checking in with her um, on a, I, I was like, look, this isn't working for me because I have other stuff going on too. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also a hairstylist, like part-time, but I, I can't really do that as much anymore. Uh -huh. So, um, but at the, at the time I was working full time and I was trying to help her. And then I was also, um, a hairstylist. So a lot. Yeah. yeah and I'm like, around. she's running around, you know, doing whatever. And I, I said, look, we need to do a schedule. Like. I can commit this many hours a mm -hmm. week um, and I can do it like a few days a week and then we can base it on that. So you send me what you need me to do. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. She never sent me stuff. So I had to follow up with her a lot and it was just like, is this how it's supposed to go? You yeah. know? So um, you, like I said though, you definitely don't need both, but it just happened out to be that way for me because I was, um, I was, trying to help her so I could learn more about mm -hmm. real estate investing. So in order to do that, I needed to fill that need that she had with the residential side. Okay. So that's why I was doing it. Okay. But um at prior to that though, I had purchased and I had purchased a home, sold a home and then purchased another home. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you just made it sound like purchasing homes are very easy. You just made it sound like you just made it sound like okay for somebody like me that um, obviously like I said in the beginning I want to own properties mm -hmm. and so like uh, my kids can have a generation of wealth. So like how can I? I'm actually also really broke. Mm -hmm. So like how can I begin to invest in real estate and what other forms of real estate are of investing are there? Like I know that you don't, I don't have to always just buy property. I heard that you can like literally invest in the property and uh, put money down and all that stuff. So like how what are the steps to that? Like what are the different type of investing in real estate? So I think you asked me like three to five questions. I so, did. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's fine. So yeah. let me keep track of. So the first one. Uh huh. Um, no, purchasing a home is not easy. Yeah. However, um, I grew up with my mom, and she was a single mother of three. Okay. Um, and so I there were struggles at time and stuff because my dad he wasn't doing everything he needed to do um, after they were divorced and so forth. And probably before they were divorced yeah. but um so um but he's actually one of my hair clients i made a comment about him yesterday and i was like so she's like let that man rest in peace he passed away uh six years ago now so um but yeah so rest in peace to yeah. but um i've seen her struggle with different things uh -huh. and i've at times i started working at age 15. Wow. i was a bagger at a giant grocery store and i used to walk um it was like 30 minute walk to get there wow. and I would go after school. Wow. Yeah. So at fifteen, you were yeah. high school. You were yeah, senior in high, high school? school. I had to get to work. Yeah. No, no, no. I was a freshman in high school. I'm tripping. Yeah. So, so I think a, a sophomore or freshman. It's I been think a, a long time. sophomore. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm thirty now, so yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> so I was um I had to get a work permit in high school and I started um um working at that age so and then they one day i switched with my friend at the register and um they were like oh you did a good job on the register and i was like 
um, oh, I don't want to be a cashier or nothing. And they were like, well, we didn't ask you what you want to do. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm telling you, <laughs> I don't want to be a cashier. So they put me in the cashier role and I left like two months later. Because oh, I, well, because last long. there was a little bit more flexibility and freedom with the bagger position uh, because they didn't really keep tabs on like, where you were and stuff. So <laughs> gotcha. I was doing my work, but at the same time, it was a little bit more lax, you know? Yeah. So, um, uh, but it, anyways, um, going from that, I, um, I, I bought a car at, I, th- I was 15. So I, su- I saved my money to, and my mom's like, well, what are you saving for? You know? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I said, well, I guess I want a car. So I bought a car. It You've was been a- making very good financial decisions <laughs> since the age it's- of 15. That's crazy. Yeah. So, um. I, uh, yeah, actually, I actually, uh, I've been doing hair. I got my cosmetology license in high school. Uh, my mom made me get it, but, uh, I was doing other people's hair since I was in middle school. So, um, yeah. And then, so it's just been like, I've had clients from when I was like literally, um, that young into now. So, uh, yeah. Loyalty. (laughs) Yeah. So. Let's say something about your skills too. That's crazy. But yeah, so. Coming from that, though, um, I always ask my mom, like, um, whenever she, she was about to purchase a house again, mm-hmm. and I think it was 2008, and I was like, um, do you think I could buy a house? Like, I always ask questions, like, to find out how I can do something. I, I feel like a lot of people look at certain things, and they're like, it's hard. Uh, it's yeah, or, yeah. They just think it's assume it's hard. Yeah, and don't inquire about like how can you actually get there and do it. This so, is why you're here, so you can tell them how. To yeah. Do it. So yes. I, um, my mom was like, "Well, ask the loan officer," and he said he thinks you can. So I was making, and then this is after um, the mortgage crisis and everything. Mm-hmm. So it was 2008 when my mom purchased, and then. I went to college in uh, Georgia, mm-hmm. in Georgia State, and um, I I had to come back to go to George Mason, and that's where I got my degree at. Um, but when I came back, I had to make the decision, like, did I want to live on campus and have the campus life, I guess, or did I want to invest in purchasing a house? Mm-hmm. So I decided to purchase a house. Okay. And walk live me there. Through those, walk so, walk me through those steps real quick. A purchase um, house. What did you? What's so, the money coming from? Yeah, you know I mean. So yeah. when I when I purchased that house, um, I was twenty one. Okay. And um, most college kids are broke at twenty one. Uh, yeah. I'm twenty six <laughs> and still broke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but now there's. Okay programs out there where grant funds where they pay your down payment for you Ooh, i didn't have that okay so i purchased it i had saved money uh-huh. um, throughout college i always worked while i was in college too like literally um i worked where my mom worked in dc and um i would literally schedule my classes so i could fly home on thursdays and work almost like once a Friday, one Friday a month. Okay. So I was doing that, and then also on my spring breaks and so forth, I would come back home, and I will always have my hair clients lined up because they're like, "Well, when are you coming back?" <laughs> you know. So um, I always and I always like save money. I'm not like a frivolous spender. So um, I just made the decision to to purchase at that time, and I was making fifteen sixty nine an hour, and I purchased a house. Now it was one seventy. Um, at the time and now those houses are selling for like 250 something okay. but that's another good thing about it because this market that we're in where we live mm-hmm. homes always appreciate mm-hmm. like the house I have now I'm about to sell actually my townhouse um, every year it's at least went up ten thousand dollars so it's always a good investment to um, have your own property because of well one there's tax you can write off the interest. Mm-hmm. If you're paying rent, mm-hmm. you're not writing off anything. You're paying somebody else's mortgage for them. Exactly. And I mean, but some people, it's just a, a mindset thing. They yeah. get the shift sometimes. And then you, but there's, like I was saying to your question about having no money to uh-huh. purchase, uh-huh. there is. There's grants now. Yeah, there's grant. Okay. There are grant funds. So um, it's income based, but as long as you make under 100000 like you can literally have the whole down payment covered by grant money that you don't have to pay back what yeah 
why don't you have, wait you you don't have to pay back no you don't so have i can to go pay sign back. up for this and then get this money. yeah now your credit has to qualify <laughs> but um i feel like people uh i wish that younger people just knew the importance of credit like mm. um and how it can take you places really to be honest okay. so um but the minimum credit score requirement for the grant funds is six 620. Okay, that's so not it's bad. not like yeah, it's not, hard to obtain, yeah, you know, but I've high. had people reach out to me like, oh yeah, I'm ready to buy now. And it's like, they their car notes like five months behind, their oh. credit cards three, four months behind. And it's like, you have to look at it like, why would a lender want to Give you lend money. you the money to purchase a whole house and you can't make, you know, payments and be consistent with that. Uh, now, now Things happen for people and their situations and so forth. So it's um, not speaking to those un unforeseen circumstances. I'm just talking about in general, like we have to be more diligent in our spending habits and practices and what we're purchasing. Stop buying shoes. Yeah, yeah you don't need the Jordans. Just stop buying you shoes. Need... <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Save that money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jordan going to pay your mortgage? <laughs> That's a fact. You're paying his mortgage. But yeah, anyways, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For probably for 50 properties or more <laughs> so mm -hmm. um uh your other question about investing i believe the different types so, of investments investing, yeah but before sorry. so before i go into that mm -hmm. like you can I always tell my clients like whenever they're making their first purchase for their home mm -hmm. like a lot of people have the mindset like oh well i don't plan to live in this area more than five years and it's like you know how much value or equity you can have in your home if you purchase a house now and you're leaving in five years in, to sell it or even hold on to it as a rental property. That could be your first rental. Okay. So always like let people know that there's like different options whenever you're ready to up and move somewhere else. You don't have to stay in that house. Uh -huh. Like yeah. I didn't. I sold my house two and a half years later and I made like forty thousand. I actually took a picture of it because I was like, this is probably the most money I'm going to have in my bank account. But it, it went to the down payment in my other house. So, and now I'm about to sell that one and I'll make about 80000 Nice. Wow. So, um, you can invest in rental properties. Uh-huh. You can invest in, I mean, if you're looking to do fix and flips, that's another form of investing. But, um, it, really, It's, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like, it's, um. It's more affordable, if that's the right term, but is it is it more affordable to uh, um, purchase and flip? Or like, do you, like, and is the return investment under, like, f um, purchase and flip, is that, is that, um, what's my question? Is that um, easier, not easier, is that, which, for somebody like me, like, which is somebody that doesn't want to, like, do too much work and doesn't want to like be all the way invested in the property itself but mm -hmm. I, I just want to like purchase it and flip it like is that um by me doing that will i get um consistent return by f like what is the um also what, how long does that the that return comes in um it depends on where you're investing uh -huh. and it depends on now you mentioned not having to do a lot of work. Yeah, know, I'm, I'm just, I just just want to put the money down. You just want to lay down. And yeah, like, yeah, somebody hey, else can do hey, the is work. Is that check coming in yet? Yeah. I ain't do nothing, but is that check coming? Yeah. <laughs> no, so like, there's work on the front end. Okay. But um, if you're looking to invest in a property. And just put the money down. I'll, the let money, you, I'll let you guys put do the Put the money. Work. I mean, there's people out there that you could, um, it's called wholesaling. Uh-huh. Like, so if you find a solid deal and you know what the property's worth uh -huh. and what it could potentially sell for as is value and that an investor can still make money on it flipping it exactly. you can um do an assignment basically you would have the property under contract and then um it can be assignable to somebody else so they can you can sell it to them um like let's say you secured a property under contract for two hundred fifty thousand, mm -hmm. but you know that the property's worth four hundred thousand if it's renovated then you can put an assignment fee in there and you would get paid at closing and you didn't put anything out of pocket. Mm. But, but, a but it's a, well, 
I mean, it's possible. People oh. do it still. Um, but uh, it's a lot of work on the front end for you. Mm -hmm. And But there's no money out of pocket involved for you. So, oh. so um, the risk is people, not really that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have much risk uh -huh. in there. Um, but you also um, have to do a lot of work on the front end, finding the property, finding an end buyer to purchase it. Mm -hmm. But um, less skin in the game for you. Okay. Okay, like um, you mentioned finding the property. Mm -hmm. How how can how do I know is if a house is like, how do I know if if I buy this house I'm gonna get a good return on investment? Like how what do I need to know about properties in order to like pick the right house and then I continue to flip and flip, uh, or I can live there and let it appreciate as time goes by. Um, how did you, you know how to pick to, your houses? You have to know your market you're in. Okay. Um. And I, I was, I took, I decided to go the route of being educated first before stepping in and watching YouTube videos or something and then just going out here doing investing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why I spoke about the lady earlier that I met that had done it and I'm seeing her house that she did. It was beautiful, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm like, okay, so she knows what she's doing. And that, that's why I offered to pay her to find out what she was doing. Uh -huh. So, um... It didn't work out that way, and I ended up having to invest in education to to get where I'm at, am now, like to flip properties and so forth. But you have to know your market you're in, mm -hmm. basically, to answer your question, um, so you can know what this property could potentially sell for mm -hmm. in the area. It's probably good to have a good realtor that does know the market well, um, such as yourself. Yeah. So then, if I'm investing, but I, <laughs> well, yeah, such as me. Yeah. However, I'm an investor myself, so I've had people contact me, like, "Hey, can you um, yeah, can you find me?" Well, they'll they want to discuss real estate investing with me, how they can partner with me, and so forth. And they're like, "Yeah." Uh, I remember I talked to one lady, and she's like, "Yeah, well, we can um," I I, I said, "Well, what do you need from me? Like, what would you need from me?" She's like, "Um, primarily locating the properties," and I'm like. I'm an investor, so <laughs> why would I locate properties for you when I would be, um, like, I should be finding them for myself. Okay. Because it's competitive here in yeah. this market. Yeah. So, um, you could, uh, but there are some agents out there that do, they, they love just staying on the other side of it, just doing regular residential contracts and so forth. So, um, then, yeah, but you find one that knows the market well um in that so you can look at what areas you could potentially invest in okay so like you advise me if i'm being an investor i should it's it's better for me to link up with a real estate agent for my benefit or if you're an investor that doesn't yeah. know what you're doing yes yeah. i don't know <laughs> yeah so the first step would be to you need to just know the market you know the trends here mm -hmm. um like myself i'm probably gonna flip for another year mm -hmm. and then i'm focusing on my buy and hold properties because the market's probably going to shift a little bit so um because it always does is cyclical you know mm -hmm. so okay okay so like um i heard also i don't know if you can like confirm this if it's true or not it's really hard to be like a first home buyer at right now so like um where'd you hear it from just like articles news and like um just reading and then um i don't know any of those um Programs. yeah i don't know any of those um articles and sources so like i won't like um was um, it on facebook it was everywhere <laughs> facebook <laughs> instagram, instagram and all that and all that so did like, it also tell you you need twenty thousand to buy a house? exactly so like all of this information where does that come i, I, don't know. I really want to know where it comes from because uh a lot of people I talk to, they're like, "Yeah, I want to buy a house, but I know you need twenty thousand. I'm like, "Where did this magical twenty thousand come Number from?" Number come from? Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's um, false. I had a very false. Okay. I had a client last year. She purchased a condo in um, Alexandria. She came out of pocket for the whole transaction two thousand dollars. Stop playing. <laughs> so how? How? Um. Because there's there's grant funds there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of people like my goal is to always like try to inform people and let them know that hey there's money out there. I wish there was money out there when I bought both of my homes, uh -huh. but you know, there there wasn't. So but that it's a 
really good opportunity right now while there's grant funds there, like use them. There's a program in Prince William County, like if you purchase a house in Prince William County, they will, it's income based, so you have to be under a certain limit with your income, but they will literally give you up to 30% of the purchase price as your down payment. And that's when you don't have to pay back. Yeah. When you're a uh, buyer, um, most people that have a family, they're looking for, hey, um, how close, how far is my commute going to be to most people here predominantly work in D.C. Mm -hmm. or up north, northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, so they're looking at their commute, mm -hmm. what uh, forms of tra transportation do I have access to like that are readily convenient for them. Okay. And then they're looking at the schools, like what's the school ratings, um, what's the crime levels out here. Um, and those certain things they're doing on their um, mostly on their own mm -hmm. um, because as realtors we can't advise people of certain things um, we can't steer them and why um, why why can't you oh because of laws uh, okay. <laughs> yeah so we're not supposed to like conflict of interest yeah we can't be like hey I, I wouldn't buy here you know like oh, okay. but you know check your local um, <laughs> um, crime ratings in this area check okay. check this and stuff like that that's what so that's background what information, information matters really yeah so okay. but whenever buyers if you're coming from another state mm -hmm. moving to Virginia uh -huh. or Maryland or DC you're looking at those things beforehand before coming mm -hmm. so you just kind of want to um, have the mindset of what the buyer is going to be looking for in the home and then that goes into what type of finishes you're doing in the home as well mm -hmm. so um, whenever you're rehabbing a property but you always have to look at those things. So I can't say if it's better to invest in Maryland. Literally, DC. you can't say. I, cause, well, no, no, no. no. I, can, I mean, um, I invest in Virginia and Maryland, but I'm only licensed in those states okay. um, as a realtor. Mm -hmm. But I don't even like driving in D.C., so I know I'm not. Um, actually, um, I'm closing on a, a property in Stafford that I'm going to be flipping. Um, I'm closing on it tomorrow, mm -hmm. and the guy's like, yeah, well, we're in D.C. I'm like, what? I don't want to drive up to D.C. to go <laughs> sign these papers. So he said, well, well, somebody can come down to you. And I was like, okay, great. But I was like, look, dude, I don't even like driving in D.C., so mm -hmm. I try to avoid it at all costs. Okay, okay. And then it's like, I mean, you said you are, um, you are um, licensed in Maryland and VA. Is, yes. it, is it cheaper in one, one state versus the other? Does that does that play a part too? Um, you have reci what's called reciprocity uh -huh. when you're um, in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Uh -huh. So you just are required, once you get your license in one state, um, then you're just required to go take the state exam in the other state if you want to be licensed there as well. Okay. Uh, both, honestly, around the same same cost. Okay, but like property wise too, like is oh, it cheaper? Properties? Yeah, is it cheaper to purchase in VA versus Maryland, like, mm, or just houses? It's just more varied? competitive here. Okay. Um, so maybe in Maryland, but there's competitive markets in Maryland too. Okay. I don't know anything about DC though, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I don't plan to ever invest there. Maybe I should, because I, I mean, there's a lot of properties that they're, you know, and unfortunately they're doing this regentrification re thing, mm -hmm. um, but. I, I just don't know much about the market, so I wouldn't, that would be more risky for me to invest Jump there. in and not knowing what you're yeah. getting yourself yeah. into. What, okay. Okay. You mentioned competition a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, break down to competition. What is like, what does that mean? Um, well, you have people here, like in this area that there's newbies mm -hmm. coming out trying to do real estate investing. They don't know their numbers. They're not educated on what they need to do. Mm -hmm and to make sure the deal is successful and that there's a profit at the end. Mm -hmm. So they overpay for these properties. So mm -hmm. you're in competition with um, people that basically don't know what they're doing and they're willing to bid higher because they still think there's profit in there. But at a certain point, it's a no deal because um, your expenses exceed what the ARV is going to be, which is the after repair value. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. Um, so, okay. Word. Word. And like, what are the um the risk factors in investing? How 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 can I lose here? Because I'm not trying to lose. Mm -hmm. So how what do I need to watch out for? Um, I would say there's, I think there's risk with everything. Life, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I would say there's a lot of um. Well, I 
like I said, I took the route of getting educated. So there's a whole class on red flags mm -hmm. in real estate investing. So okay. I know what to look for, mm -hmm. you know, and what what isn't going to be a good deal. And then sometimes you have to walk away from certain deals because, you know, it's just it's not going to be profitable. In, but you like you're like, I know I want the, I really want this property and stuff like that. But at some point you, you're just like, OK, let me let it go and mm -hmm. keep moving on to the next one. You okay. know, there's so, always the next one, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah there's okay. always the next opportunity. So um, and then I, I would say that people always need a place to live. Mm -hmm. um, we always incorporate different exit strategies whenever we're um, looking to potentially flip a property. Okay. You have to look at, hey, what is this property going to potentially rent for in the event I can't sell it? Like if the market shifts, mm -hmm. which is unpredictable sometimes, it's like, hey, what can I, what can I rent this out as? And then what are the rent comps in the area mm -hmm. to determine if if I need to keep it longer, mm -hmm. can I do that? Okay. Um, so with purchasing a piece of property, um, it's going to hold its value. Mm -hmm. So I don't really see that much risk in it, to be honest. Like whether you, you had to hold on to the property a little longer until you had to sell it, but you're not losing money if you have a tenant in there covering that um expense for the mortgage if you had a hard money lender mm -hmm. that you used and because you have to make a monthly payment to them mm -hmm. uh and if you or if you had to sell it for a little less then maybe you lose a few thousand dollars with selling it that way but i don't see much of a risk much risk. losing in okay. property purchasing okay 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 all right so like um i got a few more questions okay i won't keep you here too long but um also, like, um, I'm losing my train of thought. I'm sorry. Um, why invest in real estate versus me invest investing in stocks? Like, why did you invest in, in real estate versus, like, stocks? I don't think you can buy stocks at a discount. Um, there's, there's a... It, you're making it your business as a real estate investor, but at the same time, you're also helping somebody out of a situation. So if you're getting properties off the market, mm -hmm. you're you're providing some type of value to that person that you're um, buying the property from. Okay. It might be hard for them because they, you know, it's their home and they're losing it in mm -hmm. a way. But um, there's there's something in it for them whenever you're helping them out of that situation, but it's also a gain for yourself. So it's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I never looked in the stocks to, to, honestly, I felt like it was too much to study to before getting involved in it. Um, real estate investing, that is, you know, studying as well, but um, I like I like numbers and um, I like helping people too. So with, with those two things, like both are involved in real estate investing. Okay, there's a bigger passion than just like yeah. money and like stocks coming in. Yes. Okay. Also, like I remember you said that the um, the real estate market is always shifting. Mm -hmm. How often does it shift, and like how do you know when to like maneuver accordingly to the shift? Like, do you have to pay attention? Like, what do you pay attention to? I pay attention to. Uh, I can't say how often it shifts. Okay. Um, but is it random? It. It can take a dip randomly, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but um, sometimes when you when you change administrations, maybe like a year or so after that, it it will take a shift at mm -hmm. some point. So it, um, okay. But uh, I look at hey, what are the interest rates at now? Like how many um, houses are being sold mm -hmm. um, on a month by month basis? And then, uh, if you have a solid lender, like a regular mortgage lender, like they'll know like some of these trends, you know, so you can correspond with them as well okay. or look into research yourself, you know. Okay. Um, but uh, you, I mean, you really don't know. So I guess that is a risk of it. But like I said, people always need a place to live. We're local here in Woodbridge, Virginia. We're local to all these military bases. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, perfect. and then so people always need rentals. Uh -huh. uh, so there's always a way to, um, you know, s save or not have as much risk if you know what you're doing when you're investing initially. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, 
Okay, I'm kind of convinced. I'm kind of convinced. I'm going to start buying shoes. <laughs> I'm going to start saving my money. And I'm going to put it into real estate. Okay, and before you, we go and we leave, I want you to, you know, tell everybody, you like, what's the best, what's the best side or like, what's the most proud thing about like, that you take from real estate investing? Besides helping people, obviously, you're a great mm -hmm. person, you want to help people, but like, what do you enjoy the most about real estate investing and, um, and becoming, being a real estate agent too? Um, I would say that... I, I mean, I, I do love helping people, so my goal is always to be the realtor that I didn't have. Nice. Um, wow, what an answer. No, no I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, really, I really try to be, um, I, didn't, I wasn't told about, because I, I find a lot of realtors um, don't even get themselves involved in the lending side, and I'm like, how are you going to best advise your client and help them through this process if you're not uh, abreast of what's going on on that side of it? And then um, the p contract could potentially fall apart on the end, too. There are some people that they will literally, the lender tells you, hey, don't apply for any new credit. Mm -hmm. Once you put in a mortgage application and you're approved, um, I mean, pre-approved. But I've had people come to me, hey, I, um, I applied to refinance my car. Like, what? <laughs> so you can't, you can't do those things because it could cost you the contract, like, and you won't be able to, um, purchase the house so mm -hmm. um, I always try to advise my clients like hey uh, but I mean they make their indecision uh, their decision on their own in the end mm -hmm. but I'm like hey this is what an FHA loan is I didn't know these things can, like can this you is bring a conventional it down FHA loan real quick? yeah what does that mean? so honestly the acronym is escaping me right now but it's basically a government back loan so uh -huh. they charge you um, they give you a little bit of a lower interest rate but uh -huh. they're charging you what's called a PMI is a premium mortgage insurance. Okay. So that's because in the event you default on the loan, they've already collected some money from you in the beginning. So, oh, okay. Um, okay. but it, it does help people that if you have a car note, you got credit cards and stuff like that because your debt to income ratio is higher with, um, they, they allow a higher limit for your debt to income ratio than a conventional loan, which mm -hmm. is the other option. Mm -hmm. So for traditional lending. Um, so I always try to like, you know, encourage my clients to go conventional if they can, but if they can't, they can do FHA. It's okay. You can refinance in the, um, at some point in time, but just like helping them know that piece of it. And then also, um, how much they're going to be coming out of pocket for, uh, different things that are involved in the purchase of the house. Okay. So, um, I just try to be as involved as I can because I want to provide the best service to my clients. So um, I, I remember when I was buying both of my houses, I was the only one contacting the lender like, hey, um, because my ratios were tight. So I had to specifically look at, hey, how much are the property taxes for this house? How much is the HOA monthly? Because like literally I was treading a thin line with what I could qualify for at my max because it was a competitive market and I had to make a stronger offer. Mm -hmm. And it's like bidding. They, yeah, in my yeah. um, in my my realtors and you know they're just like, oh well, what can you, what can you afford, you know? And then they just go based on the pre-approval letter. But I always like to get involved and um, talk to the lender if they have if my client is working with their own lender. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also like to um, stay involved in general if they're working with my lender too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel like it it really does help them make a better um, decision whenever they're looking at purchasing a home. Um, and then far as far as um, investing, I find that I like, I mean, I li literally like picking out designs and you know, the, what the concept's gonna be, the layout and stuff of the house, um, what I can change it to be. Um, and uh, just, um, finding different creative ways that I can go in and help somebody um, with their situation, but I can also benefit from it too. Okay, all right, so like before you go, and before we cut this off, I have one last question. Like, what benefits do I get by being a homeowner? Just like being a homeowner, period, without flipping or anything like that. Do I get special, um, do I get special benefits from the government? 
Um, well, one, if you purchase and you qualify for the program, uh -huh. then you're getting the down payment <clears throat> assistance. So you're not having to come out of pocket the down payment okay. for the purchase your home. And you don't have to pay that money back. Okay. You're also, um, whenever you're coming to do your taxes, you can write off the interest that you're paying mm -hmm. on that loan you have for your mortgage. Okay. Uh, if you're renting, you can't do that. Like you're just paying rent monthly and it's literally going nowhere okay. but whenever you're making your mortgage payment you're yes you're paying some of the interest that you could write off at the end of the year but you're also paying down on the principal of that home so mm -hmm. at some point you're going to have a decent amount of equity in that house nice. and then you can choose to leverage that and do something else with it okay. um i can there's different loans that you could take out to invest you, in another property if you want to. With the house that you already have? Yes. Okay, nice. Once you've reached a certain level of equity okay. in your house. Nice. Um, and what level is that? Is this like um, For most lenders, it's 70% okay. of um, what the value is. Wow. So, and then um, you're also, uh, I to be honest, when I bought my house, I rented out a room. So, they were paying like half of the, the mortgage, mortgage for, for me. Yeah. I was paying... I think I was paying like six hundred dollars. They were paying four fifty, and that was my mortgage. So I mean, I had the utilities. Yeah, and then, all that. But um, and then I had uh, in my other townhouse, I rented out two rooms, and so and then when one left, I was like, "Where did my money go?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot she moved out." So, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but it, I mean, it was kind of cool because I'm like, I can use those funds for other things. Yeah. And then they're also I'm helping them out because they they have having a, place a, to live. a place to live. They have their own space. Uh -huh. Um, nobody's getting in anybody's way because I made sure I bought a house that would be big enough to fit everybody three people. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And um, so yeah, they're paying sixty percent of it. I'm paying 40 and, you know, I'm able to do other things. They're able to do other things. Nice. Are those tax write-offs sweet for you? Um, I wasn't tax writing those. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah. for the interest, yeah. yeah. Nice. I mean, you like I said, you can't, you can't write it off if you're um, renting. You can't write anything off. Yeah. And then um, you can't, that doesn't report to establish like make a stronger credit history because mm -hmm. you're not you're you're not paying to uh installment loan you're paying a landlord okay all right so like before we officially cut off i keep saying that but i'm gonna put you on the spot this is all up to you though okay you can give your information out if people want to reach out and oh. get, search more information and like they can reach out to you and then talk to you so we can help um not just me but everybody somebody else become sure. investing and point them in the right direction but that's all up to you though so whatever information whatever you give out whatever happens after this it's on you okay <laughs> just letting you know <laughs> well my, my, my information is out there so it's fine um my email is talithia morris at gmail.com and i'll uh -huh. spell my first name because you know uh <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, T-A-L-I-T-H-I-A, uh -huh. and the last name is Morris, so M-O-R-R-I-S at gmail.com. My phone number is 703-344-6762. I'm on Facebook, uh, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on LinkedIn as well. And that's and just Talitha Morris, all of it? Yeah. Okay, And if cool. you hashtag get your keys with T, you'll probably see me up there. Oh, she got her own hashtag. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Talithia. And, like, people, I hope you learned something. And put your money where it's going to last you longer. Because I'm going to start doing that. So, thank you. This is the Jiggy I'm going to check on him make sure he's done it. Yeah, true. Facts. So we're gonna, <laughs> a year later, we're going to come back and have this conversation. Now nah, we're coming back in six months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the Jiggy Show, episode 12. Thank you for tuning in. Actually, we forgot a... Very important piece of information where it actually can help all of us even more. Talithia forgot to mention and shame on her. But Talithia, please let these people know that you are also are an author and tell a little bit about your book too. So, yeah, I don't know how I forgot that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is shame she on does me. so many things. So, <laughs> slipped out of her mind. Yeah, so um, I recently um, had a book published. It's titled Consider It Soul. Uh, it is actually a guide if you're looking to sell your home in the near future. Perfect. So, um, 
it's and it's a shorter read so uh and i wish i had a copy i forgot it um actually i didn't know i was gonna be on video either so <laughs> you know um maybe that's why i didn't have it with me but <laughs> um definitely and then on the back i have um the lenders i well the preferred vendors that i work with um my photographers on there my home wow. inspector wow. my mortgage lender wow. you really um, my title people. company as well as uh, my uh, go-to contractor so um, that information is on the the back of the book and like I said it's just a useful tool and guide to help you through the process if you're preparing to sell your home in the future Wow okay so how can we find the book where's the book um, you can reach out to me with one of my uh, forms of contact I gave you earlier and uh, I can send you a free copy free yeah or wow. I have an ebook as well so um, we can download it and well, I, mean, you could, I could send it to you and it could be downloaded. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Talitha. Right, thank Making you. the world a better place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're out. Okay. Again and again. <laughs> okay. Like, How you about book? Yeah. Thanks. That's a big, that's Can a I very important piece of information. Is this thing on?